We're unmuted and connected. We um, are ready when chair is ready. And it looks like it's nine o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order in the open meeting statement that's been posted properly. It has. Roll call shows everyone is here. Uh, Casey. Casey made it. I got it. We thought we sent your bodyguard and we didn't know. <laughs> Last month I was an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need to review and approve the agenda. So move. I'll second that. And motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Same thing on the minutes. So move. I'll second that. Any other discussion in the minutes? Just a quick one. Um, we were supposed to review the um, comm center this month. In the next month, it got postponed yeah. because there's nothing, nothing, nothing changed. Changed. With, uh, supply chain issues. Not much has happened, and I thought we would do it next month. Okay. But I did bring along some pictures just to kind of yeah. give you a clue of where they're at. Okay. Use those after you, please. So, okay. Maybe next month. <laughs> All in favor, aye. All right. Aye. All those carry. Public comment. I know. I think there's any. Ag lease, Joe. Um, just an update on the Jolly Farm Ag lease. Um, we offered what the committee asked us to go forward and offer him, and he did um, accept that change in that contract. He will be farming it. Um, he came in and signed, and he actually came in and paid for 2020, the entire year out, instead of two payments. So we are good. We're set. That's done. Yay. Yay. Internal relocation and finance. And yeah, I don't mind if I come up here. That'd be perfect. No. Speak to the mic, man. <laughs> <Speak to> the <laughs> mic. Well, I think um, maybe this topic has come up over the years for quite a while about the relocation of the finance department. And I think it's a good um, a good change to make. It is also in the preliminary facility study plan that they did that they relocate finance over there. So we're asking for um, your approval to make that change and relocate them to the first floor. Um, in that facility study, they had talked about placing it in the UW extension area. So um, that seems to be the logical location for that change. I did talk to Chris about it. Um, we had some conversation, I know, um, some of the things their concerns would be is they have a lot of things. So if it were to be relocated there, they would want time to be able to make that change. Um, obviously maintenance, I talked to Ron about that, that would take some time for them as well to do the staging and make moves and I'm sure IT um, as well, there would be some adjustments if it were to be relocated there. So that's our ask of you. If that's something you're supportive of and moving forward with, we can come back with an update on the logistics and everything. I, I did talk to Heidi a little bit about it. Like I said, Ron and Chris. Um, Timeline-wise, I, I think what seems to be feasible is maybe around April 1st. That gives enough time to make the transition. I don't know if that's you feel that's too soon or not enough time? And I, I don't know, Chris, if you want to weigh in on, on that at all. If, if that is the direction you want to go, I guess that's the first thing to ask. Well, I, I, I'm all for it to bring them up <coughs> into the basement. And uh, I think it would create a better flow for everybody that's working together. And as far as the timeline is concerned, it doesn't matter to me as long as everybody's moving in the right direction, whatever, however long it takes to, to get it done. Where's the extension moving to? Well, that would be a discussion we would have to have too. Um, <clears throat> as far as um, we didn't talk about how many offices or space or anything UW extension would need. So we'd have to have some conversation with them and have come back with some type of proposal to all of you. I know one of the concerns Chris has is Penny Tang for 4-H um, has a lot of things that she moves in and out of the building for the different programs that she does. And she has um, the far office on that closest to the back door there. So that would be need to be considered so that she can be close to the ability to get things in and out with a lot, a lot of, without a lot of difficulty. Well, I know oh, a year or two ago, they were talking about the UW extension and that in other um, places, they pay rent to be in the county building. And at the time, I thought, gee, if we're looking for space for people, which we were, shouldn't this be addressed? Um, 
So maybe this is a good thing that they find somewhere else or. Two, two, two points um, to address that specifically. The contracted services agreement that is that is that we are entered into, the county does agree to provide UW extension with office space. So that is the contracted services agreement that was just entered into um, this past week for the 2022 year. Other offices that um, extension offices, and I do have work with two of them, they are in off whatever I would say off courthouse buildings, but those are still county owned <laughs> buildings that are part of that contracted services agreement. So um, at least at this point, if you would like to move us off site, it would be at the expense of the county um, to, to do so. The other point that um, a concern that I would like to raise is that a significant portion of our outreach efforts include food preparation with our FoodWise program. So we would need facilities, adequate facilities available to um, provide food preparation, storage, um, sanitary, um, sanitary preparation and storage of those items. Currently, our, um, we do have a small space that, that barely meets those needs. Um, um, as we used to um, utilize room 1037 in those um, spaces, and then we um, no longer have access to scheduling um, that space. So that is also another area that would need, um, at the very least, need to be addressed amongst the other concerns that we have. So I, I think the, the best approach would be to say, yeah, we would, we would like to see that happen. And then you guys all get together you know, we don't necessarily want to see the UW off site. It's just a matter of, you know, how can we best use the space? And provide everybody with what they need. Yeah, and this study will show that maybe there's some other departments can move around too. I'm assuming that's all in this plan. Right. Can I just skip yeah, well, right. right. So if we go back to our facility study that we've had, um, one of their concerns was getting the finance department up on the ground floor and out of the basement. Now, their recommendation was that addition, which would be from here down, but whether or not we go that direction, they had originally talked about putting finance in where UW is. And actually their other recommendation was put HR in there. I don't know how HR feels about that, but um, they thought they would put both departments in here. And now granted, if we don't go this direction, um, the current finance department could be set up for UW extension, depending on what would need to be done to set it up that way. Can you go to a lower level? No, I'm not. I'm just giving information. I'm not <laughs> trying to direct anyone anywhere else. So currently the finance in the basement here, they have a huge storage area here. They have two offices uh, right there in a big open work area. And just in the past, we added another office over here that right now currently, um, Heidi had moved back here. So this is kind of like a conference room but that could be an office. Um, it's just a matter of if that's the route we went, there's a lot of space, but this area and this is finished. This is all open storage. And some of that open storage is- um, Open as in high ceilings. But it also has supplies in it that yep. we do for purchasing in our- uh, We started- Moving that, okay. That. Just that wouldn't be an issue because okay. also, um, our department has been clearing out this big storage area of all the old stuff. And basically, if needed, anything left in here could be stored in here. There's plenty of room now. Perfect. So it's only an option. I just wanted to make I you all aware of. There is, is the first floor for a minute. This one? Yeah. No, the current first floor. Just so it's less confusing. I have that. Yeah, that one. Let me, I have that just a second. I have to share that on YouTube. I just got to get sure. to it. Okay, go. So this is the current setup. No addition. <laughs> you have UW here. Now to move, 
this is again just my opinion to move finance up in here you would need three offices to me that's way too much space just my opinion on that so like we were talking in the facility study their thought was there's three people working in human resources right now and three in finance and you've got one, two, three, four, five offices and the whole front area, which would be like the greeting area. So if that's what was wanted, you could combine both in there. Now that would open up the human resources area. I don't know what would make the best sense in there, but it would free up some extra area. And I hope I'm not stepping on your toes and maybe telling <laughs> yeah. that. And I don't want to interject myself into to this. I think the priority is the finance department. And, and I don't want to make it like yeah. I'm trying to persuade like where everyone should go. I'm just providing what was done on the facility study, yeah. just so everyone kind of understands where they were looking for a direction. That's all I got. Yeah. Wow. I think that makes good sense. And, yeah. and you're going to take the lead on trying so, to organize a study on this? Well, I think first that conversation, we'd sit down with Chris and talk yeah. about their space needs and things like that and um, talk with Ron and far as what's needed. You mentioned some kitchen area. I know there is some sink space. Um, I don't know if that's There's a, a sink and counter. Like Chris, currently for food preparation, do you use the stove and stuff in 1037? Um, what, what it was available to us, we we would on occasion, but it's very rarely available. At the so, time. so when that's not available, you don't currently. So mostly, have mostly it is um, sink for washing, not only um, uh, the the like fruits and vegetables, but then also the sanitation of the equipment. So, yeah. um, you know dishes um, and then storage of all those supplies. Plus um, we do, I mean, we have the refrigerator to store, to safely store those items as well. So, so you said that uh, it, it barely meets the minimum needs that you have. So what more would you want or do you guys need? We might as well look at that now to see if we can expand that to what you guys really need. And we could we can look at that. I mean, it's not like it is. I mean, we we have a very very small sink um, that eventually we get hot water. Um, if you know, so sanitation is is an issue. We have very limited space because it's also a storage area as well. So the actual food prep space to keep the the supply storage um, separate is um, that that's where I mean it's a very tight space. And actually, um, I think you could make that uh, the HR area function for what they need. Would that be very small for? Okay. Yeah, we have eight staff that need space. Yep. Okay. Plus storage for a now, uh, seven six hundred member outreach program, um, plus other educational programs. So we have a significant amount of storage space. So with, with see, the basement. If we redid the basement area for you guys, would that be enough room? I, I don't know. We would have to. We would actually have to sit down and um, sketch out the um, the the space. We there is a need for some of the programming in the offices when the, the individuals work in the office, including um, this is also my home office as well. There is a need for. Um, confidential workspaces. So for, for um, you know, Penny has um, volunteer management issues. So there needs to be um, spaces for closed door conversations. Um, we also have our food wise coordinator who is a supervisor. Um, so there would be HR concerns about having, um, you know, non, at least, at least spaces available for confidential or private conversations. So actually right now there is a sink and counter in this area here um there's plenty of room here for like the refrigerator or whatever is needed there's also a sink over in this room here um the biggest thing probably would be is the way it's set up now there's three what you could consider offices this would have to be set up cubicles or or whatever there's a lot of room here 
But I think when you go to actually making the offices, that's where the big uh, expense would come in. Um, what about the expansion program? Is that kind of just on hold now? That we're supposed to look back into with all the remote work now. And uh, was that this year, Heidi? We have the money to revisit yeah. that? Yeah, we have to do a new study because there's so many people that are yeah. working from home. Well, it doesn't yeah, make during sense. COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So office-wise, are you thinking like eight total offices or? Um, not necessarily. We currently have, um, we currently have uh, eight staff total, seven of them, um, six of them are in office spaces. So we'll have the five office spaces, we do have one shared um, one shared space. And then the front office reception team um, has um, in, the, in the cubicle areas in that front reception area. Well, there's a lot of ideas out here, but I think we're gonna have to just study this and come up with a plan and, yeah. and we'll need a motion. Or and then of course, the other, the other thing would be is, obviously I didn't plan for this. I don't have the money in my budget how we would handle the finance of remodeling. Well, only we had somebody in finance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my opinion, I think getting finance out of the basement is the first thing. And I will make a motion. Is that what you want? You want a motion, yes. Sir. I guess we did the ball rolling and do a feasibility study here. So the motion is to um, start the process to in order to move finance out of the basement. Right. Lower level. Yeah. <laughs> well, and whatever that spend comes up with, they may have a plan for. And then and, and, and have and, and have a, a staff work group report back their findings. That's come with some great. options to you. Yeah. Options like options options. I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'm just making Sounds sure that this foyer agrees with that. <laughs> okay, so start process to move finance out of basement and have staff come back with options. Sounds That's good. okay. We, we I, need I, a second. I do. second. Okay, we have a motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Dang in there, man. <laughs> right there. Hey, Heidi, you, you don't mind moving up there. Whatever. <laughs> I didn't talk to Heidi. I yeah, mentioned that. We've been having the discussion. Okay. Issues are bad. Oh. Okay, we'll pack a river mitigation bank all recite approval. All right, if you could pass those three down, please, Ron, to this, this group. You take one, Ron. Here's another three. If you could pass those down. If you, if you need it, I do have the GIS open to both those spots if you need them. Yes, if you could get close to the Lakeview site for us to play around with that. Three. Is, that is that okay? Yeah. Get more. There's some. Yeah. Got ten copies with me today. Just one to Ryan over here. Thanks, Daisy. We'll be involved in the conversation. They got two more. Anyone else want to copy? I'll one for the official file, please. Yep. I got one of that. And then I got one myself. I'll get one to Kyle. Yeah. All right. So the Wapaka River Wetland Mitigation Bank idea <laughs> is coming closer and closer to fruition. There is um, um, a lot of things that we've We've done planning wise that have led up to us now getting <coughs> formal approval and um, decisions that are kind of a joint. I want public property committee to uh, you know know approve what we're going to send to the internal review team, which is the DNR, the Corps of Engineers, the Environmental Protection that that 
you know, approves this site plan of what we're doing. And I know I met with public property in the past. I asked for your group to give me permission to use um, all of the farm fields. And we'll start off with <clears throat> we'll start off with some land that's but let me go up there, Jill, and you zoom in. Let's just talk. I have to I have to be up on a big screen. So where would you like to help? Right. If you could be right here by this Quonset hut. Um, yeah, right here, yeah. Yeah. Right by this building. Sorry. Yeah. So well, now if you could just left click like one time in this corner, right, right, yeah, right there. Oops, I right, but sorry. So see how it highlighted that um that blue line around here on your sheet, your big sheet right here, that, that's in yellow. So there is a parcel of land that Wapaka County owns, which is this whole area here with all of our buildings in, that includes farm fields. And so the, the highway department wants to get as many wetland mitigation bank credits as possible. And you had given us permission to look at the boundary of all of the properties, but this one in particular raises a kind of a quick question. So if you could close this now. Yeah, sorry, yes. I was trying to get to that. <laughs> this parcel is located in the city of Wyoiga. According to developments and breaking parcels apart, we've exhausted all of the uh, the amount, what would you call it, the amount of times you can break a parcel apart. So we cannot break these farm fields out of this city of um, Wyoiga owned by the county's parcel anymore. So what I'm looking at is on your map, the small blow up one of the green and the yellow, I would like to include the green highlighted areas in the boundary of the wetland mitigation bank, but it's going to encroach into this parcel. Now we definitely can say, let's not encroach into this parcel and let's just follow these lines and keep everything just not attached to this parcel. Um, but we lose about three acres. This is about 2.7 acres. This is about 0.3 acres. And if we're able to sell credits, at $75,000 per credit, um, you probably won't get as much, but this is probably worth, I'm just gonna throw a, a number out there, it's probably worth about $100,000 worth of credits we could sell if we just make our boundary outside of it. But if we include the mitigation bank to be attached to this parcel, what's gonna happen is from here on out to the R, the Environmental Protection Agency, they're going to have a conservation easement that, in, that includes this parcel of land and this parcel of land. So if the county 80 years from now, 100 years from now, wants to do anything with this, there's always going to be this permanent easement that we can't do anything with. And so I'm just throwing the two options out. We include this farm field in this little section with the big plan, or we just say, you know what, let's play it safe and just follow the boundaries. That way there's no conservation easement on this parcel right here. So to me, obviously we want to get as much as possible, but is it going to mess with us in the years to come? Total uh, credits that this ultimately will give us is how much? Well, I think the site pilot was 244 acres total. And we were looking at, you don't get, it isn't a one for one match. It was like 190 credits. It was a lot <coughs> less credits than acre because it needs like one and a half acres of farm field to restore to get one credit. But it's a big site already. Um, I mean, you said, We'd be losing a hundred thousand in credits, another thousand dollars in credits there. We have about five. How many total? That's about 190, 190 credits. No, and there's and three credits in, between those two. So in dollars, what ultimately wants us to money? Yeah, if we if we exclude this area, it's probably about a hundred thousand dollars less that we could generate as revenue by selling credits. But take into consideration, we have one of the largest mitigation bank sites already. So 
excluding this section right here isn't going to make or break our county. It's more or less a safety factor that 80 years from now, if we want to sell this to someone, like we did down here, Ryan and his crew, we had to take that mitigation bait, if you could scroll up, we had to parcel that off. See how we had to parcel off this mitigation bank when we sold Lakeview Manor a couple years ago? We're not allowed to break that apart anymore. We cannot, if we wanted to sell this, or if the county wanted to sell the Gateway House or any of this, for whatever reason, which happens in the future, we probably couldn't break out our mitigation bank. So this parcel would include some of the conservation easements or that they would have up here. So but the point you're trying to get to case is ultimately, potentially, how many millions of dollars? Right now they're looking at about 18. 18 million? And so we're just losing 100,000. It's a no-brainer there, I think. Yeah. So what you're what we're looking at doing is in on the large sheet of paper that I give gave you mm -hmm. in purple. The purple is the boundary of the wetland mitigation bank, that whole big site. And we have to make a decision. Do we want to include a little bit that encroaches into this parcel or just exclude it and follow our boundaries and be done? I would just do that. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking a little bit too. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want the county to ever want to sell this and then no one wants to buy it because there's an easement on it and they want nothing to do with it. Right. And then we as a county are the ones holding the dollar value on someone else's land. And that's where I, I just need to give direction to Kyle, who's the yeah. one helping draft up the boundary of the mitigation make and move some of those purple lines. So, Casey, you know, we may lose out, say, 100000 uh, on that, but we're doing it in case we ever want to sell that property. And if we sold that property, that would reduce the loss. Correct. Yeah. Well, Casey, the only other option I'm thinking is this <clears throat> it's in the city of Wyoming. This parcel is in the city of Wyoming. Right. Yes. So that's that's no longer telling. So I don't know. Do you actually wanted to divide that three acres off? You mm -hmm. probably still could, but it would be in the city of Wyoming. Right. So the, the only way that what the way that we could do that is by annexing right. that. Right. So the, when, when Casey was talking about it, in terms of the, the subdividing, because in, in statute and in our ordinance, because we've already had that, uh, we made the four divisions, actually five divisions out of there. We're not allowed to make any further divisions on it for a five-year period. And so we can't create any new lots. The only way that we'd be able to take that three acres in that north uh, northeast corner there would be to annex that, in or I should say detach that right. from the city so and the, into the county. Yeah. If that, so I guess the idea is, <clears throat> is it worth it to do that, go through that process? Because the other part, there's that little corner to the west there too, <clears throat> yep, that right where the, uh, Casey's got his finger, then that's the other part of that farm field that's also within that same, it's in the same lot within the city limits. Yeah. And so <clears throat> the other way that's potential to do this is by agreement, by saying, you know, as a uh, basically an easement to, to allow for them to still have that be part of it, agreed upon by the county as the owner and the city with it being within the city limits. Um, but again, like 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 Fred was saying, is in terms of we're talking about hundred thousand dollars on a grand total of. So I guess what it comes down to is what's worth it in the end. Is it worth, worth it to go through an annexation detachment process to take the, those corners out and have it be clean so that it goes back to the town of Royalton? Or yeah. the, only, really, the only other thing I see happening is Stewart saying you, you got to do something with that land because it's not going to be farmed anymore. He's going to want you to plant it something there, right? Because his big his big worry is always switch grass blowing into the mitigation bank, uh, buckthorn, you name it. You know, one of the things that I'm thinking of doing something with this parcel is for the life of this project, we're going to have equipment that mobilizes, comes in, comes out. Um, storing construction materials for it. Maybe this area just becomes like a parking lot that our equipment can drop equipment off, pick equipment up in. Because once we plant all this in trees and wetland uh, type plants, 
We're not supposed to drive on it and touch it. And this gives us an area for all of our crews to work off of to support this whole big project as well. Right. That's what I was thinking of doing with that area to make good use of it. Um, you bring in your excavators and your bulldozers to go maintain a ditch. We can use that for that potentially there's a, in the mitigation plan there's the idea right now of creating like a kiosk and a little parking lot at this corner well if you create a parking lot that excludes you know restoration credits maybe we make that parking lot here to make good use of it um would it be a good place to because you can have walking trails and stuff in there right a place to start from and then and then yeah. take off on it and walk. Yeah. yeah, would that be a better spot for that so we don't lose that another area? It well, yeah, this area right here, when you're parked here with your car, you're looking out into a, honestly a real pretty looking area. This kind of is is right. a, sitting back a little bit farther than that, but still to walk one minute up and see the same view. I don't know. I'm leading to just following this border for right now and not tying this lot into the big mitigation bank kind of, but we have to, we have to agree on that before we send it for formal approval here this spring. And that makes sense because again, it comes down to the mitigation bank and we generate a heck of a lot of millions. And we're just worried about losing a hundred thousand dollars, but it, like I said, before it's a little greater. Let's just keep it out of it. Well, you're going to need a place to stage stuff, anyways. Yeah, so yeah. This I, I really don't see it as it's just we're going to utilize it for yeah. better purpose. We're spending it on some better purpose. And when we talk about 18 million, we have to find buyers. It's not like there's 18 million sitting there in the cup. So it's going to take years and years and years and years and years to sell this off um, based off of buyers. And I'm thinking with this infrastructure bill coming, more money getting pumped into the system. The whole area north the Fox River watershed is going to have a lot of development and those needs are going to increase. And we're going to be sitting here with the availability to sell those credits. Even when we get three or four million, how many years is that going to take that long? It won't take long. Joy? I just want to encourage Jack. Have anything? Well, watching it makes sense what he's saying there. And it, uh, I, I, I guess I, I wasn't aware I that. I agree with uh, you too. Quantum lot was in the city limits. I always thought it was not. Is it? There's a weird little point out here, you know. Yeah, I, you never know. Just looking at it, I know that. But I... Dave, can I ask a question? Yes. When you talk about it being in the city of Waiwika, does the city of Waiwika have any concerns? <clears throat> because right now it's a farm field, but if they're going to be paving it or using it as a staging area, do you see any problem with their regulations of? The county doing that on their own land, if it's well, I guess it's owned by you. It's own, it's ours, right? But it's in the city of Wailea. With the city zoning, right? That kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 I think it sounds like a great plan to use it for something, <clears throat> but I'm sensing that when it's all farm field, the city really doesn't care. But if it turns into something else. Will they have a concern with us being able to do that? Is my question. I, I don't know why the city would want to be against anything like that, but once again, uh, Casey, I, in a dark area there, I think that's probably what the people bought to make you matter, right? This is lightning matters. So, yeah. I guess we always thought that that metal building was not part of. What we then um, this portion is the one that he says that we own that's within the city. Of the blue line is the city, <clears throat> is it highlighted in yellow on the big sheet? Is that big parcel highlighted in green? Is the one we have to debate if we want to include it in the mitigation? This one, this one. Yeah, this one. Dave, just another comment the more people you can keep out of this, Casey the better you are yep. when you have to go to all these people and ask and when you said if we keep that and then we have to go to the Corps of engineers and the, the dnr and all that if we can get away from that we're better off yeah. 
That's what Matt's telling me that a little bit now too. Again, we started with trying to get as many acres as possible. I told Kyle to draw it up that way, but I'm thinking just Must be what we'll follow that line. I'll make that motion that we uh, remove that section that case the end of the referring to this small yeah. sheet exclude right. that from the wet bay can i can i read what 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 i think you guys said sure. over time this is how i took you excuse the exclude the portion of the mitigation site that is within the property that we own um by the lakeview manor by lake Umea, that is in the city of wywega as presented by Casey at the meeting. Exclude the agricultural field attached to this parcel from the mitigation boundary. Mm -hmm. Moving on the second, Joe. Exclude the agricultural field. Attached to parcel, whatever this parcel is, from the mitigation boundary. Mm -hmm. And we haven't submitted this to anyone. It's still sitting in the idea area on Kyle and Maya's desk. Kyle's created a, uh, a description of the boundary lines, and once we submit it, it'll be very, very hard to get to them levels to change it in the future. Exclude the agricultural field attached to parcel 35323112 of, on the mitigation site that is in, within the property in the city of Biwego, Yeah. as presented by Casey at the, yeah. as yeah. presented by Casey. You're good with that? Uh, yeah, that, I think that's, I'm leading up to that. I'm thinking of it, and that's why I brought it to this committee to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a yeah. comment. I'm still going back, <clears throat> excuse me, to Jack, and it's the city of Wyoming. Don't you have to go back to the city council and just tell them what's happening? I will, but I don't think we've got any, really any control over it. I, the, the motion, as far as I'm concerned, is good. We own the land. It's only if we use the land in a different. If we use the land that it's not zoned for, then we'd have to go back to the city to make sure that they. I was married to a mayor. I'm going to go out there and look at it when I leave here because I actually thought when we came up and sold that land to Lake uh, Manor, we were with the understanding that where the brick building is on the opposite side of the road, that tree line was. Uh, the lot line right along the top, top of that black. Uh, yeah, this is this is the property line. That's what we thought. Yeah, with that goes with this building, but this is just a weird looking with the gateway house on it yeah. and the, the crematory and all the little buildings that are unused and kind of abandoned. Um, that might be a discussion in the future. What this group wants to do with all those buildings? Aren't? Yeah. Okay. Any, any other discussion? I, I do. So this is also with the city of Wyoiga. The administrator of Wyoiga, Jeremy, he's been asked to by these new residents, and there was 18, 20 cars in there, so people must be living in there now. Yeah, he's got over half of rented already. He, wow. he was he was asked to illuminate. He was asked to illuminate this manor drive with street lamps. And so Jeremy reached out to me and he said, Casey, do you, is there anything you need to do on your behalf? And I'm like, well, for you to put street lights on your road, that doesn't have a lot to do with me. But if the power company, We Energies, is going to be out there performing that work anyway, on our mitigation, that big sheet of paper I gave you, right here, uh, Jill, if you could zoom in and say right there. Yep. Right now, there's power lines, and, I, and this is in red on your on your map. There's power lines that run out into this agricultural field, and up here, you can kind of see it on this map. There's like three lines. If you could pull this down and go by the water tower, other uh, other oh, way. Right. Yep. Keep going to the water tower. Keep going. Then power lines come up, and then they cut across here. Anywhere that we have power lines or gas lines, they become easements on our mitigation bank. And so right now, the power lines kind of run out in the middle of nowhere now. They probably supported buildings or supported something in the past. But I'm thinking maybe the county, if you could scroll back up into that banner drive, if the county worked with the city of Wyoiga, 
and we energies, we take all these power lines and get them right out of our fields, which are easements that count against credits for our mitigation bank. And then the power lines are, are buried underground They're right here. It cleans up, it cleans up that on your all the red lines just going through the middle of our field that aren't for use anyway. But that comes with a pretty good expense as well. They want to go underground with it. I we'd have to give it to I have to apply through We Energies and then We Energies um, designer looks at the whole site and it's a maze of just stuff that used to feed all these buildings. Mm -hmm. And would really for the future of of the county's land and our mitigation site be nice to get rid of the power lines and just move them more uniform. Uh, if you went out there and you looked around, you'd say, holy man, is this a mess. And this might be the time to work with We Energies in the city of Wyoiga, which the city would only be in charge of their lamp project. We'd be in charge of our, let's move the power lines project and really clean up the, the waste of space that this these lines take. The poles are decrepit. Every pole almost has a <laughs> three transformers on it. There's a lot of stuff buried underground. It's just, it needs to be abandoned and it never did get abandoned and, and relocated. Before the committee um, acts on any of this or talks about this, I think Chair was trying to call the question on the other motion to make sure that's called first before we act on this. So just All right. one second. Yeah. Well, 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 then let's do that. Any any further discussion on the On, on the excluding the abortion. abortion. We didn't call that question yet, so. <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Period. Thank you. Sorry. I just, we needed to finish that. But I don't have to commit to the costs of any of this. I just need to put an application into We Energies to give me a preliminary estimate to make a decision what it would cost to move all of this to make, to clean it up. If any well, else. That's you know, all that mess that we were looking at when you were showing me those trees out there, right? All the different lines going through the fields and that. When you go out there. I worked in the utility field for a lot of years. You go out, you can't tell what's feeding where. Not anymore. No, it's just a maze. It's nothing. So, yeah, I think you need to clean it up. How you do it, you know, that'll be up to them, I guess. So, uh, you're requesting to be able to put in an application to find out the cost. <clears throat> yeah, to be energies to clean up the utility lines. That way, we don't have to have an easement that goes through this property, which excludes acreage for a mitigation thing. So do we need a motion on that, or can we just let Casey? Let me just apply for just it. apply for it and yeah. bring a light research yeah. for a yeah. discussion later. Is this even on the... It is part of the wetland mitigation bank he's discussing. So, but he's not asking for a motion to do it. He's just letting you know. That makes good sense for me because that, that whole system. Yeah, that will be a. Uh, he's I just agree. asking for permission to get information yeah, yeah. to bring that. If, if you look on your sheet right here for this mitigation boundary, right. this this area that goes right here, this is a high pressure gas main. We need to exclude that from the mitigation bank. It's in the boundary, but because there's a high pressure gas main, we need to exclude 75 feet of area for that gas company that has a construction easement over that gas line. <coughs> we also are going to exclude from the project site, the road. We're just saying 66 feet in case they want to do something with that road in the future, that it doesn't have to come out of the mitigation bank credits. And I would really like to, at some point, not even get involved in excluding those power lines as another encumbrance or something that needs to be excluded from the whole site. Uh, I agree with you. I was just playing down in. Yeah, yes. no, that's good. Yes. So. It's part of the wetland mitigation boundary stuff. So he is talking in that nature, but he's not asking for a motion to just that he's giving you an update. Being in the street phase is going to be a big number, but yeah, it probably need it should be cleaned up if you can in any way. Right on. Ready to move to yeah. thank yeah. you. <laughs> Once chairs ready to go to town. Okay, so he's already got the power pump in the lights for in there. Yeah, they're already coming up for the five on. Yep. And then um the gentleman that's doing the designing, Mark or Matt, he I wants know. to know if we want to do something too. So when his crews are out there, then they can just look at it as a bigger yeah. project. Yeah. 
I think if you look at that line you're talking about in the field there, David, David, you might remember, but I remember well when the old barns went on that that line went right to the wall of the old farm barn, farm building. Because where that line is, there was there used to be two or three big huge barns over there. Jim, on the west side, Jim, if you click on the two lines, I'm going to jump back up here. If you click back up here into this little block here and show the old aerial photos um, of, from years and years ago, if you just click on the 1994 photo, you can see that there's big tree lines there. There's all kinds of buildings up in that area. And then there's newer photos over time. You can see stuff in 2005 start to disappear now they're gone but the tree line is there and then as you get you know updated updated all the way to 2020 everything's just become farm field so it's neat to kind of see that progression in photos i think what happened there was they were taking a barn the building was down there used to be a, quite a set of power poles going up there and they, then when the, they got the farmer and they wanted to make it wider the crop or uh, crop land uh, they took all the poles on and put where it was underground. I think that's what how, how they ended up over there. But there's a lot of drops coming down the yeah. poles. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, we we'll go to number ten. <clears throat> Conduct soil testing on the PTF land. You're still up. So that, that this is another good discussion. So located out at the processing transfer facility, we know that there's a lot of good sand. And I've always had the idea that if you own it, you control it. If you control it, you set the price. Um, right now, we're not paying a, a, a ton of money for sand, but at the same point, it'd be nice to have our own sand source. And located at the PTF is um, multiple properties. And located in this area right in here is across the road from Jimmy Haas's big pit. So if you kind of scroll into that. There's a big sand pit right here. So I know that the same soils that are here are pretty much across the road. And so um, if we can get good sand for winter for our own crews um, out, of, out of a field here, I would love to do that in the future. And then we have our own place to, to take rocks, to take brush, to take that. Right now, the county highway department doesn't have that. We store it on other people's properties and pay them you know, $1,000 an acre for land use or disturbance. We store it behind our Calvicia shop. Um, it'd be a nice place for our highway department, centrally located in the county, for a place to go with stuff, um, muck from projects, whatnot. But for right now, I just want to go up there with our backhoe, dig in the ground, see if there's good sand like there is there, and then use it for winter. Now I don't have to buy it from a supplier. I still would have to pay for an outfit to come in and screen it so that it's clean. But our 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 own machine could do quite a bit of it. It's just that we wanted to put up 30,000, 40,000 um, yards or tons of material. I probably would just have an outfit come in and screen a lot of sand for us. Um, someday in the future, and the sheriff isn't here for this discussion, but someday in the future, he had the idea of having a county-owned shooting range. I don't know if that's ever going to come to fruition, but that would be located in the same site as that area. So I just want permission from the Public Property Committee to just dig sand. For a, a little background on it. Solid Waste does own the, technically the land because it was bought for a dump site it, to be a dump. It was never used for that, so solid waste had to give has to give had to give permission. They did take it to their meeting. They gave permission to dig it. Um, it doesn't mean that they had gave permission to go and make a sand thing. It's just the starting phases of this, and this is currently um, ag leased land. So um, you know we have a couple of years left in our ag lease contract as well. But Casey did um, present it to the solid waste, and they did provide. Um, their permission to go ahead and do it. Is that correct, Casey? I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing yes. that correctly, yeah. right? Parks or solid waste did, uh, that committee agreed. Yeah. I just know that we know that, and I don't know how many of you know that, so I'm just passing that. You, you would just dig several holes just to test. We'd strip the topsoil, we would dig down and see if, if there's good sand, because sand can be good or bad for our operations. If it's real silty, we don't want that in our box, which is mixed with salt and it, <laughs> the material stays up there. But if it's a bony sand, you know, and like a concrete type of sand, 
like we we've known is across the road, then that might be a spot that I start investigating in the upcoming years on, on a source of sand for our highway department. And we don't have to bid that material out. And uh, as a former firearms instructor, um, I can see why the sheriff would want a, a designated area for just law enforcement to shoot. And if you guys can uh, do cooperatively work that same area, I think that's a win for everybody. Um, you play a card for everybody who wants supervisor. Well, the sheriff's department has to have it all designed, and we got to make sure that what we're doing to extract the sand is producing a project for them. And I know they got zoning discussions, and there's a lot of different levels way beyond. Uh, I just want to look at it as is it viable for a sand source? You right. just want permission to test, right? Uh, yeah. Just dig yeah. test holes. Yeah. Uh, the sheriff, the sheriff's, uh, not the sheriff, John Francis has told me years ago they did a study on this land where soil samples were done for a future landfill. And he has all of that in his office right now for me to bring that information back, which shows the elevations of the water tables, what type of soils there are. And that's going to let my management team make a decision and say, yeah, this is this is what we want. But unless you see it, touch it, and feel it with by digging with the backhoe, you don't want to make any promises because you get in there and it's all crap. And then you can't use it for what the R intended use would be. Do we have any concerns about where you would possibly dig in our egg lease? I would put the, I'm going to put the sand back in its location. I'm going to put the topsoil right back where we extracted it. And the egg lease would have no, no, no they'd yeah. be able to farm right through it when they're done. Be devil's advocate making yeah. sure it would not happen this this summer. You need to bury a few weeds. So. We bury a few weeds. <laughs> Casey, I, I would, if you did you know that this is a good place to do this, um, is it locked in forever? Because we were at solid waste and John made a comment about. Um, you know, it's not out of out of the realm of possibility that someday we might want to sell that land. Uh, look what happened to Lakeview Manor. And so my question is, if you start this, is that ruining it for anybody who ever would want to buy it? Our highway department would want to buy it because it's got good sand in it for a bit. You're bringing up a problem. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to want to buy it. it I mean, they gave permission to come here, um, but they really didn't give their permission to go, you know, just all out. And yeah, I, and he's just seeking permission to dig the holes to test the sand. Right. He's not going any further than that. Done. Right. If I get too far ahead of myself and say we want it, and I don't know what the sand looks like, well, then that, I want to start with baby step one. Yeah, you, just, you just want permission to dig some test holes. It'd be one day for an excavator. And that's what they, at some sure. race, that's what they agreed to. Yeah, so when do you think you would, would do that? This winter. This I would winter. go in there in the next couple of weeks. With, okay. If everything holds good with the weather. I make the motion that we uh, allow Casey to uh, proceed with testing of that soil. Me too. Second. The motion is second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, right? All right, aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. If it does become where we're going to look at that being a sand pit, I have to go through the East Central Region Planning Commission, get all my pit permits, my DNR permits. It goes into a lot of different local zoning meetings before it gets to that point, gets that far. It'd be about three years, George. Thank you. I'm still upset about it. <laughs> Luck with all your projects. <laughs> Maintenance updates. Ron. Oh, it's oh. something if you look on there, he said, hey, I'm here. <laughs> no, I'm on there, but uh new tractor and snow. Oh, okay. Yep. I need a new one. Can you bring up the baby tractor here? I will. I just am locating it. Sorry, there it is. <laughs> Just so stop share and share just a second. For 2022 on our equipment replacement schedule, we have our tractor that we use for uh, both lawn mowing and snow removal. So we had been talking in the past, we've used Reserve and Cell and Point. 
And talking to our guy that we usually work with up there, we kind of gave him, clued him in on us looking this year at getting one. He said, um, you want to get the ball rolling quick because supply issues, you know, if we go ahead and get, get this ordered, we may not see it till after March. Um, we may see it sooner, but I know in the county, those big purchases, they, you know, they like you to shy away from doing them right away in January. Um, but this, we decided to get our three quotes and get the ball rolling and get it ordered because we're probably looking at months yet before we actually get the equipment. So what we're looking to do is replace our tractor with basically the same model one because we really found out to be a good tractor. Um, uh, we got our three quotes. We spoke to all three of them about possible trade-in on our old one. And I discussed it with Brent Parker, who does a lot of the mowing. And after seeing what kind of trade-in they give, we decided it'd be a better option to keep it as a backup. And that way we have an extra one, especially with big snows, we could have two, two tractors going with the snow blowers. So we went out, um, told them what we needed and got three quotes. This first one is um, from Reister and Snell. That's who we used on our last tractor. That came in at 17,656. Um, we go down to the, now that includes a deflector kit because we're also looking to get a, um, one of those power brooms for the front of the tractor. So that includes a deflector kit of which costs hundred dollars. The next two quotes, um, we did not mention the deflector kit, so they don't include that. So I'm trying to get to where it is so you can say who it is. <laughs> the only implement in Wapan is the next one. That one is a little confusing but where it says 17,330 because they included a trade-in which we were gonna eliminate. So basically that comes in $18,030. And then we have one more out of Oshkosh. Um, that one excluding a trade-in comes in 17,419. That also doesn't include the deflector kit. So you'd be looking at about $100 more. So all three quotes, basically, um, two of them are within a matter of a couple hundred dollars difference. Um, my thought is I would really like to use Reister and Snell, seeing they're maybe $200 higher than the others, but we've had good luck with them. They offer um, delivery and pickup when we have problems, and they've just been really easy to work with. So what we're looking for is permission to go ahead and start the process and get it ordered. I'll make a motion to go ahead and order for Reister and Snell. I'll second it. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? In local people close by sometimes helpful. Yeah, they've been really good working with them. Very good vote, a very good reputation. Yeah. Nothing else? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. So current facility improvements. Um, we're still working on our HVAC upgrade where they are still in the engineering designing all the graphics um, for the new software program we did make our first initial payment on the project this was actually last year's project but we carried it in i had spoken to heidi and we drove it <laughs> last year because of supply chain um, our department ourselves we ran all the cabling cat six cabling for all the panels that they're going to replace and now we're just waiting for them to get to the point to replace those panels. So hopefully very soon we'll get that all set. Um, the project also comes with training for two of our employees. Um, I believe it's a three-day training on the new software. So it's just a matter of myself and deciding which other person to bring. What I may do is do the training myself in one person and then possibly put in next year's training to get the other guys trained on it also. 
Um, Sheriff's Department Comm Center, um, there's a lot of su supply chain issues. I haven't really been involved with anything over the last month. It's just a lot of waiting. Uh, yesterday, Sergeants Inc. did come in to work on the card readers in there. And now they'll also be looking at possibly another card reader where they're going to add a door um, in the hallway entrance to the comm center between the comm center door and the jail to kind of a little bit added security right there. Um, other than that, I do have a CIP project this year for replacing the Ansel fire system in the IT server room. That's extremely outdated and actually no longer used in a lot of places now. So I did get the quotes and same thing with supply chain. I had Apex come in that does our, our fire work and got the quote and they're gonna go ahead and start ordering the equipment because they said the same thing. This could be months before they get all the equipment in. So getting the ball rolling on that also. Um, other than that, not much else, just day-to-day -day stuff. Everything rolling along. Yeah, we're just kind of curious because um, my whole department saw on the agenda about the UW, how much will be involved there. But uh, realistically, if they get into building walls and stuff, we won't be doing that anyway. We would have someone who to do it. But we're there to help move the, all the furniture. You could realistically move HR and finance into the UW wing without much work. It's moving UW that is going to be interesting what we come up with. No, maybe they'll do a little purging too and that'll help. <laughs> well, they're, they have a lot of stuff in their storerooms. So I understand they need a lot of storage, but that big area down where finance is now is huge. It could give them way, way adequate storage. But we'll wait and see. Good. Anything else? <coughs> That's all I got. Any conferences or seminars? I was at Fred's house yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't do any good. Well, I put up a sign for school board. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, next meeting is February 11th.